Once upon a time, there was a magic book. DNA is an excellent computing substrate for molecular programming. It has natural interfaces with biological environments. It can be chemically synthesized with any desired sequence. It provides a combinatorial design space with a four-letter code using A's, T's, C's, and G's. And it has predictable behavior with Watson-Crick base pairing. In this book, the magic spirits are three kinds of DNA molecules. They are small, and they have very simple structures, either short single strands or short double strands with overhands. DNA strands can be represented as colored lines with arrowheads marking their orientations. Programs with these DNA molecules can be designed and understood at the logical domain level, where continuous subsequences of nucleotides work as functionally independent units. For example, the single strand at the top consists of two longer domains on the sides, colored with orange and green, and one shorter domain in the middle, colored with blue. Because each domain can be assigned with different sequence choices, one can actually neglect the sequence during the process of designing a molecular program. All DNA molecules have their special identities here. Single strands serve as free signals that can interact with other types of molecules. When hybridized to complementary strands, they become bound signals that are inhibited from interacting with other molecules. Thresholds eat free signals while destroying themselves. A free signal can release a bound signal through strand displacement. The process starts with a free signal strand binding to the double-stranded complex by the uncovered short blue domain called the toehold. Random branch migration occurs because the sequences of the orange domains on both molecules are identical. When the top strand is only attached to the bottom strand by the short blue domain, it will quickly fall off. At this point, the free signal strand has released the bound signal by becoming bound itself. This process can be reversed symmetrically. The bound signal can be imagined as a molecule riding on the right side of a seesaw. In the free signal is a molecule wandering around. When it finds a seesaw, it jumps onto the left side and pushes the right side molecule off to go wandering, and the two of them can go back and forth. Now imagine a playground of seesaws. Each seesaw exchanges the activity of molecules on the two sides. Each molecule can play on two different seesaws. Such a playground is actually a network connected by the flow of signal molecules. In addition to activating other bound signals, a free signal can also be annihilated by a threshold molecule. It is a much faster strand displacement reaction due to the longer toehold. The process is irreversible. It only produces waste products that cannot react with any other molecules. Threshold molecules are like Pac-Man. They eat free signals, 
but by doing so, they also kill themselves. DNA molecules are too small to be visible. So, how can we see the computation? Reporter molecules are structurally similar to threshold molecules. But when a free signal arrives, it strips a quencher away from a fluorophore, which is now able to glow. Reporters are like molecular scale light bulbs. They get brighter as they eat more signals. One seesaw can be associated with multiple signal molecules on each side and a threshold. In a network, all seesaws have the same types of molecules following the same mechanisms, only assigned with different sequences later. Thus, an abstract diagram can be used to simplify the design process. Each seesaw is represented with a two-sided node with any number of wires connected to each side. Each molecule can have a different number of copies, which is related to the designed function. In the abstraction, each molecule is represented with a number. The combination of its sign and position indicating the types of molecule, and the absolute value indicating the initial amount. Aided by this abstraction, seesaw nodes can be wired together in various ways to implement various functions. For example, this pair of nodes computes the logic AND function. After designing at this abstract level, molecular implementation can then be interpreted as two seesaws, or equivalently four DNA molecules. All types of logic gates can be implemented with seesaw nodes. They are easy plug-and-play molecular components that can be systematically designed to create networks that function as arbitrary feed-forward digital circuits. This example circuit computes the square root of a 4-bit binary number with the output rounded down to an integer. After being translated into a seesaw network, there are initially 74 different DNA molecules in one test tube. Then a set of 8 single-stranded DNA molecules will be added to the test tube as input signals to the circuit. Each strand represents either logic on or off of one of the four inputs. After the inputs are added, Interactions between all DNA molecules will be triggered in cascades, and output signals will be gradually produced. Four molecular scale light bulbs with four different colors are used to monitor two pairs of output signals simultaneously. With input 0000, two dotted output trajectories go high and two solid output trajectories stay low, indicating that each bit of the output is computed as logic off. So the output is 0, 0. The square root of 0 is 0. With input 0001, the solid trajectories of the first bit output and the dotted trajectory of the second bit output go high, indicating the output is 0, 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Similarly, the square root of 4 is computed to be 2, and the square root of 9 is computed to be 3. Compared to electronic circuits, the computation is quite slow here. Nonetheless, molecular circuits could be used for embedded control of molecular devices in biological and biochemical environments, where even slow computation 
can be quite useful. When the behavior of a bag of molecules is programmed, it is as if one can track the activity of individual molecules on the map of the abstract design. Every node indicates a seesaw that takes a signal molecule on one side and sends off another signal molecule on the other side. Every wire indicates a signal molecule that travels from one seesaw to another. Every pair of seesaws performs one digital logic computation. If this computational power of DNA molecules can be used for rational design of core circuitry that drives various molecular devices to act on their biochemical environments, it will lead to real-world applications such as smart medical diagnostics and therapeutics. More importantly, Exploring the principles of molecular information processing systems synthesized from scratch may provide insights for understanding and appreciating the power and mystery of life.